Okay, last example. Let's bring this question back here. We've got a whole bunch of different numbers. We've got whole numbers, we've got ba uh, basic thirds, and we've got thirds with coefficients. So we need to be careful with how we do this. First off, I'm going to put my rainbows in. I'm going to do first by first and multiply first by second. Then I'm going to have second by first and second by second equals. Now I might keep these in colour just to make it a little easier to see. We have the little one. 3 times the square root of 5 plus our big green rainbow of 3 times negative 3 root 2. Okay, dealing with our red rainbow now, we have plus 2 root 10 multiplied by the square root of 5 plus our big one, negative 2 root 10 multiplied by negative 3 root 2. It's getting lengthy again. As I said, I'm not going to lie, these do take a bit of time. Okay, let's start simplifying. 3 root 5 can stay as 3 root 5. Now we have 3 times negative 3 root 2. So a positive times a negative is going to give us a negative. 3 times 3 is 9 and the square root of 2 stays the square root of 2. Plus, now yeah, that should have been a negative in there, which means we have a negative times a positive, so we're going to have a negative here. And we're going to have 2 times the 1, so the 2 out the front, and a 50 under the square root sign. And then we have a negative times a negative to give us a positive. 2 times 3 is 6, and under the square root sign, we've got 20. Alright, still a bit more work to do just yet. 3 root 5 is as simple as it can get. 9 root 2 is as good as it gets. 2 root 50, that can be simplified. What I'm going to do, I'll highlight that, underline that in green, and go over the side here and say that we're going to do that as a little side project, so to speak. Okay, so the 2 stays, and we're going to split the 50 up into two factors. And I'm going to go ahead and just go 25 and 2, which means we've got 2 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. We, the square root of 25 is no longer a third. The most accurate way of writing that is as a 5. And then we've got root 2, so that ends up being 10 root 2. Going back over to our real answer for this question, it was minus, and instead of 2 root 50, we're going to say that it is 10 root 2. All right, the last one, 6 root 20. Same sort of deal. Is there a number that can go into 20 that is also a perfect square? I think there is, so we're going to do this one as a red side project. So we're going to have 6 root 20. Now, the 6 stays out the front, and I'm going to split the 20 up into 4 times 5. 6 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. The square root of 4 is no longer a third. That is 2 times the square root of 5. So that gives us 12 root 5 as our little sub-answer for that one. So over here goes plus 12 root 5. All right. Now, what do we start to notice? We start to use another previous skill of adding together and subtracting thirds, and we've got a square root of 5 and a square root of 5. And we have a square root of 2 and a square root of 2. So we need to add these together. We've got 3 root 5 and another 12 root 5. So we have 15 root 5. Then we have negative 9 root 2s. Take away another 10. So we've got negative 19 root 2's. Alright, and finally, that gives us our solution. After all that work, all we get is two thirds with a couple of coefficients. A couple more examples. I just want to make sure that we are used to looking at them. Uh, this example here, it is a perfect square of a third. That is, it is a binomial product because it's two terms 
added or subtracted together, multiplied by another two terms added and subtracted together, but they are the same in this case. So we have the square root of 7 minus the square root of 5, and that squared sign means that it is multiplied by itself. So it's the square root of 7 minus the square root of 5. And we go about this the same way we'd ordinarily do. Square root of 7 times the square root of 7, square root of 5, and the square root of 7. Then we're going to do the second by the first, and the second by the second. What we're going to do, we'll start a little bit lower, make sure we've got enough room. The square root of 7 times the square root of 7. Whenever you multiply the two thirds together that are the same, your square root sign simply disappears. Then we have the big red rainbow, and that is square root of 7 multiplied by negative root 5. So that's going to give us a negative square root of 7 fives are 35. All right, now we have the little green rainbow, negative root 5 times root 7. Negative by a positive is a negative, and that is going to give us another 35. This time we have 5 times 7. Negative times a negative is a positive for the big green rainbow. And when you multiply two thirds that are the same number, you just get the number without the third sign. All right, pulling our answer together, we have 7 plus 5 to give us 12. And then negative 35, negative root 35, sorry, take away another root 35, which gives us minus 2 root 35. Now having a look at the square root of 35, it is a large number, so there may be a perfect square that can go into it. Uh, what do we got? 25, that's not going to work. 16's not. 9 is not. 4 won't. So that is as simple as that answer is going to be. Last example. And this is just a little special case that I hope you keep an eye out for. All right, having a look at the defining features. 3 root 11, 3 root 11, 4 and 4. The only difference is there is a plus in the middle of one and a minus sign in the middle of the other. And let's see what that does for our answer. Okay, now we have first by first and first by second. And we have second by first and second by second. We need to make sure that we multiply along each of those lines. Okay, 3 root 11 multiplied by 3 root 11. That is our first one. 3 root 11 multiplied by negative 4. That's going to give us a minus sign. 3 root 11 times the 4. Now remember it's not negative 4 because I've taken account of that and put the minus sign out the front. Okay, plus, now little red rainbow is 4 times 3 root 11. Big red rainbow is 4 times negative 4. Now I write negative 4 this time because I wrote a plus sign and I didn't account for it straight away. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9. And when you multiply two numbers that are the same under a third sign, that square root sign disappears. So it becomes just 11 minus 12 root 11. Then we have plus 4 times 3 is 12 root 11. And 4 times negative 4 is minus 16. So what we have, 9 times 11 is 99. Now we've got two thirds that are the same, so we can join these together. They are like terms. We have negative 12 root 11s plus 12 root 11s. So that actually gives us no root 11s at all. So we can say, just in our middle here, plus no square root of 11s. And we have minus 16 on the end. Pulling that together, 99 minus 16 gives you 83. So what I referred to at the start of these defining features being the first two numbers being the same, the second two numbers being the same, the only difference being a plus and a minus sign in the middle, is the fact that two of your numbers are going to cancel out. And if that doesn't happen, you haven't done your multiplication correctly. And you need to account for that and have this in the back of your mind when you see that you are trying to do binomial expansion. They're the same numbers, just different signs. Okay, that about wraps it up. Thank you for your time and good luck.